Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our final conversation is about security, and it's on a, a recent directive by the Office of the National uh, Security Advisor for all illegal security outfits in Nigeria to be dismantled. And they specifically mentioned just one illegal security outfit, which is the National Tax Force on the Prohibition of Illegal Importation Small smuggling of arms, ammunition, light weapons, chemical weapons, and pipeline vandalism, and that's called NATFOS. It was a statement from the head of the strategic communications of the Office of the National Security Advisor over the weekend. You know, they're saying that these um, illegal security, um, you know, outfits basically extort Nigerians, mount illegal roadblocks, and so they have to be scrapped. Um, we've invited a security analyst, Mr. Boston De Raipe. Um, good morning, and thanks for joining us from Rivers. Good morning. How are you doing? Well, good. Thanks for being here again. So we know that there seems to be, you know, heightened insecurity in Nigeria at the moment, you know, but um, we've seen that one of the responses to that is a scrapping of this, you know, so-called illegal... Uh, security outfits. Do you think this is for the good, since they're saying they extort Nigerians on illegal checkpoints, or do you think that's a move that we shouldn't have considered in the first place? Well, uh, if you ask me, first of all, <clears throat> when you say that uh, you are dismantling uh, illegal uh, security checkpoints, uh, what would you understand? He said all illegal security checkpoints. Now, you see, we have to define, we have to define what he meant by all illegal security checkpoints. Not checkpoints, Not outfits, one. security outfits. Outfits, sorry, all illegal security outfits. We, we have to define them. You have to give us a definition because there are so many security outfits in this country. And I'm not sure they are illegal. You understand me? Uh -huh. So, except he's telling us that the federal government is disbanding operations of XYZ security outfits. That is true, because I'm not sure there are illegal, very big and popular illegal security outfits that stands on the road to take money from people or to do whatever our tax people and all of that. Because security is very big. No, no illegal security outfit can boldly be on a Nigerian road illegally. No, now they have an approval somewhere. So if you are telling us that the office of the NSA is dismantling illegal security groups, who are the illegal security groups? The group you just mentioned are not illegal security groups. They were founded, they were commissioned directly or indirectly by an authority that gives them the power to do so. So you can't call them illegal. You can only say you are disbanding the operations of social and social security groups. That is one. Two, why is this announcement coming now when the nation is looking for all hands on deck on security to be able to solve the issue of security challenges that we have on ground? I think this is like leaving what is important to begin to chase shadows. Uh, Mr. Raikwe, let me, let me ask um, about... It, it, it kind of seems like there is more than, uh, than meets the eye with this uh, story because... On the 30th of May, there was a report on uh, newspapers across Nigeria that an Israeli team was coming into Nigeria to train this same NAT force. Uh, the DG of NAT force only yesterday was uh, in the news uh, saying that uh, the mode of operation, I think it's called the legal framework, is being put together concerning NAT force. And then this morning, we are hearing that uh, the um, outfit is going to be banned or it has been declared illegal. Does it seem like there might be more uh, than meets the eye with regards to the NSA, uh, Monguno, and uh, NAT Force? Well, personally, as a security activist, what, what I would like to say about this particular issue is this. I repeat, issues of security should not be politicized, should not be used to get back at someone. Issues of national security should not be used to get back at someone. In fact, it's not everything the office of the NSA is supposed to publicly announce. Their operations should at some point be more of covert. When you come up publicly to call 
a national organization or a national agency recognized by government that has the director general, which means it is recognized by government, that receives money allocation and has the right to receive money and fault people on certain areas with regards to security. When you come out to call them illegal, uh -uh, that is too big now. You don't just mention that. You are the NSA. You can have a private meeting with them on behalf of the president and say the president has directed that you should dismantle this. They will dismantle it peacefully. It's even the DG that will announce the dismantling. He doesn't come up and announce that they are dismantling social and social illegal security. First, you call them illegal, which means all that they have been doing in the name of official, which is on behalf of the country, has been illegal. Oh, so you know that they are illegal and you have been allowing them to extort Nigerians. Chai! NSA, is that how you behave? Can you imagine where people are going to be thinking? It only goes to show that the government is not organized. The, the, the government is not organized. All right. How can the first son, who is older than the last son with about 30 years, stand on the street to be fighting with the last son? It only shows that he does not know he's the elder. You understand me? So these things... These people have to sit down and take calculation. They, they are doing things that primary school people won't even do. And it's very funny and wrong. When people, when people in the country are learned, when people in the country are traveled, when people in the country that have understanding of these things, even layman, and then you come to make such a kind of a pronouncement, you don't get your grammars well. The grammars are confusing. And then you do this. It's, it's, it's uncalled for. And, and I think that uh, the, the whole Nigerian system, in fact, the federal government of Nigeria, should have a retreat. And then they should invite uh, professionals to lecture them in all areas of running a government. Okay. And then they um, should be willing to learn. And then they should implement whatever they learn. But let's also talk about this. There's people who would argue that there's a lot of security agencies, there's a lot of MDAs, well, security agencies um, and outfits in the country that seem to be mirroring each other. Um, there is too many, you know, anti-graft agencies. There's too many, um, I mean, every single security outfit in the country has one that is pretty much the same thing, doing, you know, pretty much the same thing also. So should there really have been that force in the first place when there is the Nigerian police force, when there is other, you know, segments of the Nigerian police force that should be in existence to tackle illegal, you know, smuggling of arms and ammunition and some of all of that. So do you think this might be a good enough reason, you know, to dismantle that force, seeing that it's, it's of no use in the first place when there's already established offices and government that should tackle whatever they were set up for? What I'm saying is this. Policies can be made. Policies can be reviewed. You can wake up tomorrow and say, look, there is no need for a Ministry of Police Affairs. They should be under interior, like the former administration, like the first tenor of uh, 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 President Buhari's administration. They were under interior. No problem. You can review it again and say, look, oh, police need a ministry of their own. They should be on their own. No problem. You can make policies. You can review policies. It's not a bad idea. What I'm saying is that when you are communicating with people, you should be able to make them understand. The last time I was here, I talked about carrying members of the public along. That's what I said. What I'm saying is that going national to announce this as the NSA, instead of the director general of that organization doing it, is wrong. It shows, even if there is no fracas, but it shows that somebody is trying to fight somebody. And that person, because he has office, is going ahead to make certain announcements. So it doesn't show that the government is coordinated. Anywhere that has a director general in any government agency, it means that they are under a ministry. And they are under the federal government one way or the other. So it's very easy to call the director general and give him a directives and say, this is what the position of the presidency is regarding your operations now. Do this, and he will go and take the action. That's what I'm saying. Is the DG that should pronounce the disbandment as a directive from the presidency, not the NSA coming to pronounce the disbandment. The NSA should be busy with national security matters, very important ones. We have killings here and there. We have an uh, attack on known gunmen. We have headsmen. We have Boko Haram. We, we, we have uh, issues here and there. The NSA should focus on those issues. 
and be giving directives to the relevant heads of those agencies that need to be, for them to be the one mentioning pronouncement. You understand me? The NSA don't need to come and begin to shout that. That's what I'm saying. He's leaving the big league. He's leaving the premiership. Uh, and he's going to play the last division. That's wrong. That's my point. I'm not saying they have no right to do whatever. That's one. Two, calling something that is a government that has been running for years illegal. You are calling it illegal. So you... All right. Seem to have lost uh, Mr. Wright bit there. Oh, well, uh, we'll try and uh, reconnect with him and, of course, uh, keep the conversation going and uh, maybe also get to the dangers with regards dismantling this um, 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 agency of government. Mm -hmm. um, does that, is there a likelihood that, you know, those who are pro proliferating uh, small arms and ammunition and chemical weapons uh, well, um, across the country would then now have a free day? Anyway, yes. Um, yes, very important question there. Oh, Mr. Arakwe, good to have you back. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the point is this. Our government should be sincere enough to understand how to run an administration. They, they don't do this. If you have something you want to ban, you cannot say they are illegal. You can't say they are illegal. They have been operating for years, remitting money if possible to the federal government. And now you are calling them illegal. That's, 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 that's not right. That's, that's funny now. Who are you taking for granted now? You don't do that. Okay, that's so, one. so Mr. Raipe, um, we know that not force, you know, when I read through the their, you know, aims, their objectives, their mission and all of that. They're saying that they're set up to combat, you know, proliferation of small arms, you know, importation of weapons and all of that. And we know that with the worsening insecurity in the country, this is something we've seen. We've seen pictures of, you know, truckload of weapons, you know, just being transported from one part of the country to another. If, you know, an organization like NADFORCE, that's their job and duty to check things like that. So if NADFORCE has been disbanded, do you expect the government or the NSA in the coming days to, to announce a new NADFORCE, a new group that would, you know, be charged to do that? I mean, what really would be done to fill the vacuum by an organization that checks illegal arms smuggling? First of all, eh, calling them illegal is wrong. They have been legal. That is what they are set up for. So the NSA should go and apologize to Nigeria. Okay. For that wrong pronunciation, that is one. Two, him announcing it, instead of directing the, the, the DG to go and announce it, which he has power on behalf of the president to direct the DG to do so, is also very wrong. Now, thirdly, the NAP people, whatever their name is, I have not even seen the work they are doing. They say they are here for glorification, this, this, this. How many amps have they picked up? Yes, arms are flying everywhere. Where are the unknown gunmen getting arms? Where are Boko Haram getting arms? Where are headsmen getting arms? Which means they are not even effective. You understand? So it's a problem everywhere. Problem everywhere for them. Problem everywhere for them. Now, my point is also this. By the police act, the inspector general of police reserves the right to create tactical things, of which they are doing. They have anti-smuggling in the police. They have anti this anti-robbery, anti-kidnap, anti-vandalism, anti-pipeline, anti-this, anti-that, e-crack, operation, they have operation crack, operation pop other. The ID keeps opening. Commissioners of police in different states also have the mandate that they can create tactical things on their own. And they don't have a, a, a drug law in the police, so they, they have anti-drug. They have a unit that is in charge of drugs. They have all those things in the police. I will still have NDLA in Nigeria. So I begin to wonder. I don't understand, though. And these people don't complement each other. Though. They don't complement each other. So I think the National Security Advisor should just sit down and call for professionals in security angles and let them explain all the challenges they have in Nigeria. And while explaining those challenges, they should also explain all the security agencies in Nigeria and the powers they have in terms of creating tactical team and special force to tackle such a crime. They should astray and advise him properly. He is also an advisor, but they should first of all advise him so that he can have what to advise the president okay. properly. So that we don't have all this rubbish, uh, someone coming on today, tomorrow, someone will mention this and mention that. Those things are not comfortable at all. All right, Mr. Raipe, awesome, right. we, we understand your perspective. Thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning to discuss uh, the dismantling of illegal security outfits. Thank you so much.
All right. right. So that's where we wrap it up for today. Um, Ms. Haraipe really wasn't having it regarding, you know, how, you know, the NSA called them illegal. Yeah. The, basically, the whole process of the announcement, really, he, he felt it should have been done right. And yeah. really, the mirroring of each other regarding different security agencies doing the same one job, still that crime seems to thrive. Yeah. That just is a big issue. Which, which is actually very funny because there's so many. Like he said, you know, the, the police has its own branch for corruption, has its own branch for drugs, has its own branch for cultism, has its own anti-terrorism. Anti anti you know, at the same time, we have, you know, other agencies that are still set up to do the same thing. Yet... Those it's still just, not working, you know. you know. And good question he also asks, what has the Nat Force really been doing with the level of pro proliferation of small arms and ammunition and smuggling in, in Nigeria today? Um, you mentioned, you know, that uh, every now and then we see of, uh, you know, weapons being found in some container, but that is really by Im immigration, customs and immigration, um, um, and not by Nat Force. So what, what exactly so have they been doing? I think another thing is maybe, we, when you even read the statement from the... Um, from the NSA, does it not then seem that the excuse for the disbanding of this group is not even tenable because this, they're talking about certain of illegal roadblocks when we can actually look at, is this group even effective? You know, are they actually doing their job? You know, that seems like even something that's more credible for Nigerians to, to say, oh, they're actually not doing their job. They're not effective at doing this. Well, saying they harass Nigerians, they stop people, setting up roadblocks. It's, I, don't, I don't really know about that. Know, but I made mention of mirroring um, of uh, different agencies, you know, and it feels like, you know, every now and then they set up a new one, you know, to create employment for new people. You know, it's not because they actually have work to do. Even oh. with this NatForce, there are people who are, I mean, go and check NatForce's website. You see... News flash. We're not setting up. We're not carrying out recruitment. It's fake. You know this and that. It's just so. So it feels like they just set it up. You know to give somebody post in government um, and make somebody DG. You know maybe employ a few people and pay them salaries. And these people don't go to work. Uh, they don't have any jobs that they go to every day. Um, you, and how is it that you know the, the day after the DG is saying that they are setting up a framework with three day work? With Israeli you know, experts. Israeli experts are coming to train. You know, and the NSA is and they took great pictures illegal. with the Israeli experts. <laughs> yeah, right? So, see them right so here. it it really just sounds, and I might be wrong, and I would I would love to be wrong here. It really just sounds like an agency that was created to give somebody position. Um, you know, Oga, what have you been doing since I'm not to know since retirement? Oh yeah, come on, take this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take this I really tried so to do some digging about NatForce to find out, okay, when were they created? What was the law that was that led to you know their creation? Tom Polo was giving contracts and, and all of that. I, um, I couldn't get I the, those information during Good Luck's uh, uh, government. Tom Polo was given a contract, you know, for uh, um, safeguarding pipelines and and uh, all that, all those infrastructure, um, and so. <sighs> Every single, you know, security challenge that we have in Nigeria has an agency that is created to check it. Solve it, it. Yes. yes. You know, but you know, don't seem to be working. Still, you know, still none exist. of them. Yeah. You know, and um, we we hopefully would find out more about all of this mess and the drama concerning. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we can get the Nat Nat Force DG to explain his own side of things. Hopefully, hopefully. we'll see. All right, that's where we'll wrap it up for, for today. Thank you so much for starting our week with us. We want to wish you a great and productive week ahead. And, um, of course, if you missed out on any of our conversations, you can join us on our YouTube and uh, Facebook. And uh, Twitter as now. well. And it's like, because, I mean, the conversation now, people are saying they're able to tweet without VPNs, so maybe the Twitter ban is over. This is what people are saying. Well, I personally haven't been able to log into Twitter in the past few days. Well, let's Instagram, see. Facebook, yes. and YouTube. Let's leave yes. it at that. Um, Ad Plus TV Africa. Ad Plus TV Africa. And Ad Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. That's our new YouTube channel. Um, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, comment, all our content there. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogie Ogbonwam.